Welcome to Ask Chef Tony. Here we are, this beautiful December day in New York. And as I woke up this morning, the day was screaming chestnuts. What are chestnuts? What do we do with it? There are many different kinds of chestnuts, first of all. There are hundreds. And um, as you go around the world, we all associate them in different ways. We, we like to cook them in different ways, but we, most of all, we all would agree, one of the most famous is the roasting the chestnuts on the open fire around, especially this time of the year. In Italy, we find them in many different ways. We like to roast them, cook them, boil them, um, candy them. Um, and I have some examples here. For example, we have, this is what I got at the market. This kind, in Italy, we call them maroni. They're big. They all have a flat side because they, they fit together inside of uh, this shell that it looks almost like a sea urchin. These are the little castagne. These are from um, the northern of Italy. These have been already prepared. They're already roasted. They are soft, moist, delicious. These can be used in many different ways. Or you can just eat them like that. Mm. Fantastic. This is a um, what we call the marron glacé. It's more of a it was probably originated into the French side of Europe. And it's simpler. After you boil your, your castagne, or marrons in this case, we, we prepare a solution of water and sugar, a syrup. We put our castagne in there, our fruit in there, and let them cook and, and get the sugar to caramelize around it. They become like a candy, crunchy on the outside, castagne on the inside. Fantastic. Um, as I said, you can find them if you don't want to go through the trouble of actual cooking and roasting and peeling and whatever. You can find them in these days in, in a many different ways. So you can find them jarred these have been boiled, uh, it's an Italian product, it's, it's, they're boiled and ready to go. Now, you get them out of this jar, you can eat them like that, you can put it in a salad, you can put in a, in a meat dish, a risotto, etc. Or you can go ahead and glaze them or turn them into dessert further, and etc. Um, you can also get those and turn them into a puree. Now, Puree. So like, what do I do with the puree or chestnuts? Well, think about peanut butter. This is the chestnut version of the peanut butter. You can use it as a spread. You can mix it with a chocolate uh, spread, such as Nutella, maybe, um, or just like be creative with it. We have other ways that you can get them around, you packaging and a little holiday look. You can add it to a basket for your friends. Or you, after, that, that is another way that actually my grandfather used to, that he used to sun dry them all the way until they got really hard. Now, that's a product that you need to have a dentist as a, as a friend because they got, it's not for everybody, you know, you, you, they get hard. You, you could uh, chip a tooth on that, but they're delicious. Now, after they are dried, what do you do with it? Some part of Italy, what they do is they soak them in wine or prosecco, uh, red wine, white wine, whatever you prefer, um, or cook them further or turn them into flour. You turn them into flour, which can be used into making other uh, 
not only desserts, you can also make breads, sweet breads, you can mix it with the other flowers and etc. Chestnuts, as always, um, bring me back, bring me back to a certain time period in my life. We had this braciere, a brasera. We, we, my grandfather would prepare, this. it was uh, uh, made out of copper, I remember. And we would gather around it. From what I remember, all it was on was some candles. My grandmother was big in candles and candles around and the other, maybe the other source of light would just be some infiltrating light through the window and she had the shell on and we would just gather around this little taper fire and roast our chestnuts and then eat them and talk about things. Those are good memories. Those are memories that you want to keep. And I'm going to bring those memories back. I'm going to bring those memories back for you, for my kids, for all of us. Well, now let's prepare the chestnuts. We are going to roast them. If you find that, you, if you find a good source, uh, a place that you've been happy in the past, firm, hard, heavy, good chestnut, stick with it. That's it. My grandfather used to say, don't lose all the road for a new one. There are two actually layers of shell here. There is a hard brown shell that you uh, you'll see and then there is inside there's another very almost like a peel you know delicate thing in, on the inside. But what we want to do is we want to put a a, um, a dent. We want to have a cut into this knot. It would explode if we would not pierce through this hard skin. It might be a little difficult for some people, so we could also use a towel, a kitchen towel. We will put the knot right there and we put the knife and we put some pressure on it. Or not, we do not want to put too much pressure because we don't want to go straight through the whole knot. But we just wiggle it through. I would say probably halfway through it. And, and there you have it. Once we have enough, we are going to put some water and soak them briefly, introduce some more moisture and uh, I will toss them around a little bit, drain the water and go on with the next step. Uh, the way my grandfather used to do it and, you know, use one of this. One layer, like that. We will take a towel that we would moist or just run it under the cold water faucet and we will put it over it. What this does is keep moisture constantly on the nuts, on the fruit right there. And as as uh, the, the moisture will evaporate, we like to add more, just add more in there, and we will like monitor, mix it, and put your towel back on, and add more water, and that is one way. Now, why, why do we prefer a pan with holes versus something solid because the holes let the heat go straight through get the steam circulate as the heat goes through it 
the towel, wet towel on top, stops the 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 steam and makes it makes the whole thing perfect. That's how you get chestnuts, perfect chestnuts. The, this is it. Now we can also do this exact thing on the stove. We could do that right there on your fire, on your regular stove at home. We could do that on a wood stove. You could cook them on, on, on the actual fire, on charcoal, on the barbecue. You could, uh, you could do this very, very easily on a barbecue. And if you didn't have, if you couldn't find one of these pans, you can improvise. You can, you can uh, improvise with one of those. What is this? This is one of those that came with your oven. This is, of course, perfect for it. Another idea is you got a container, a metal container. This is a cookie uh, container that I saved. And of course, you would not want to do this in the house. You want to take it outside. Place it on the stone, on, on the stone, on uh, on a surface that is not going to damage anything else. And uh, you start your own little charcoal bed here. You will put your little, like we mentioned before, pan with the holes. Scatter your. Doesn't that look good? Beautiful. It's a wonderful thing to do with the family, with friends while you just gather together and you talk about things and you, you know, it's not something you want to do in five minutes, you know, it's something that it's great to to gather around, roast your chestnuts and once they're done and how do we know when they are ready? How do we know it? Once the shell starts splitting up and there are, remember we said before, there are two layers. There is the hard shell, the brown shell that we all know here. But there is a second um, peel, you know, a little tiny, very flaky shell on the inside. Chestnuts are ready when that second shell detached from the fruit. Once the whole thing is out, we are going to be able to peel that apart and get the actual fruit out and enjoy it. It's a shame that it, we only have a short, very short time out of the year, but as we have that, enjoy it. <laughs>